Okay, hi, this is Ginger Cook, and this is our ocean master class. This is our ocean master class, a wave and wa waves and water. Won't, won't always be waves. There's a lot of different kinds of water, lakes, waterfalls, and so forth. But today we're going to be painting Crashing on the Rocks. And I think that's a good title for this picture. The original picture that I did for you was on a linen canvas, and it's 8 by 10. But I thought it might be nice to do a larger canvas and so this is 12 by 16 and it fits very nicely in with, with the camera that I'm doing and here's some of the things that we're going to be learning today in this uh, in this particular class we're going to be learning paint order now some of you if you've taken lessons from me with gingercooklive.com uh, you, you, you know about paint order but we're going to just go over it again I'm going to pretend you just haven't heard any of this and then we're going to be talking about directional brush strokes. Some people think it doesn't matter which way your brush goes, but trust me, it really does. We're going to be talking about using a unity color to make a painting fit, fit more and, uh, and have more of a con uh, con continuous uh, color pattern to it. And then we're going to be um, also, you know, this is the thing that really stumps people, how to make a wave transparent. We're going to talk about glazing and the value of zinc or mixing white and we'll be going into rocks and some other things but those are the highlights of what we're going to be doing and I'm just using a styrofoam plate today normally I might use a um, a palette paper but I think for the purpose of the, of this video that I'm just going to be going ahead and, and using this and I've got white on the plate I've got ultramarine blue, thalo blue raw umber, burnt umber, dazzling purple and burnt sienna and I haven't put them all out yet because I don't need them right away acrylics dry in about 10 minutes so there's no point in putting everything out but for the purpose of of the the initial underpainting or the original painting um, I've got white ultramarine blue thalo blue and raw umber now what I want to do is show you about adding a our unity color today is going to be raw umber and we're going to start with the sky first that's the painting order and I've gone already gone ahead and just um, come down this was a 12 by 16 canvas and I came down about uh, uh, three and a half inches and came down and drew a line across here with charcoal or not charcoal but just kind of a gray piece of chalk like this so you could see it just a pastel chalk and, um, and put this line in now I'm going to go ahead and take some of the white and a small amount of ultramarine blue not very much and mix that in like this just a little bit. Now I could it be, uh, you know, I could add red because this is a little bit bright, and so I'm going to put a little bit more with it. But I'm going to add a little bit of the raw umber, about two percent of raw umber to this. And what raw umber does, besides being a unity color, is it sort of grays it so the sky isn't so in your face. And all right, let's put a little bit more ultramarine blue in there to start, and uh, and a little bit more raw umber. So I want the top part of the sky maybe a little darker than the bottom part. I don't know yet. It's a little more white than that. So, all right, so there's that's pretty much, see how I'm kind of scraping and squishing? That's my color. Now, I'm going to take a fairly large brush. This is a um, number eight ruby satin silver. I'm just going to come up with this color. And I'm going to start putting in the sky. And I'll start up here at the top. Now most people might start here and then they work their way down, but when you're doing a sky, particularly if you're mixing, you have a larger canvas and you're mixing, uh, you know, small amounts of color, start with your, go all the way across with your first batch of paint. Go all the way across like this. Then get a little bit more and overlap. This is very important and you'll notice that I'm going back and forth with my brush strokes. And if I'm making two or three brush strokes and nothing happens, I will add, get, grab a little more paint. Now I might at this point, I have a little mister bottle, and I might just give it one mist. That's it, one mist. And come here like this and come down a little bit. Now sometimes on a painting like this, we might even have done a, an ultramarine blue underpainting. We could have, but actually I'm just putting this on fairly thick enough so I don't have to. So I've come down about three quarters of the way. Now I'm going to add a little more white to this. Start overlapping that. Do you see that? My brush is dirty. So if I get a little bit more white on here like this. Oops. Got a little bit too much ultramarine blue. So we'll put some, um, just blend this out. Now, kind of blending this up into the sky. 
and even with a little bit of white I'm creating sort of some streaks they could be clouds now I'm going right into the white like this come all the way down to this horizon line and if I want it it's generally your skies are lighter at the horizon line this is pretty much true you can pretty much say that when you get to the horizon line and it goes just what's the horizon line what's she talking about the horizon line is where the sky meets the ocean or the land if there are no mountains so of course there wouldn't be mountains in the middle of the ocean so that's where the horizon line is and so that's here and you see how it's a little bit we've just blended in something a little bit lighter now <clears throat> sometimes you might see someone and they might tape this line here I, I've, I'm pretty confident I've got a nice straight line and if it has a bit of a wave to it it's alright I don't mind I can straighten that up later but I don't want it a hard tape line now at this point you'll look at the picture I've got some pretty dark blues here now at this point the rest of the painting is going to be an underpainting and what I'm going to do now is just take some more ultramarine blue and I happen to be using today um, Matisse and I've got some ultramarine blue and I'm just going to go ahead and put some more out on the palette this is my underpainting and my main goal here is to just cover the rest of the canvas in, in dark blue paint and this will be our first layer of color and then I'll go over it again with, a, with, the, with the water but that's my first I'm just taking some paint on the brush ultramarine blue and coming back and coming right under this line here might even just leave a little edge so it can be come back and be careful later in a minute now here's a trick you've got a big canvas like this it's 12 by 16 mist your canvas just take the mister like this give it a couple squirts you're not real wet but just mist the canvas now come back with the paint and watch how much easier it goes on uh, we're using a heavy body paint that's professional acrylics and that's what if you're going to take up acrylics use the best paint use the best brushes if you're going to take the time to do it it's if you if you find it is expensive make smaller pictures at first till you get the hang of it and you know then you're mixing smaller amounts of paint but don't cheapen up on your materials now you notice I'm going back and forth I'm not going up and down I'm not doing my traditional weaving pattern the reason I'm not doing that is because uh, your underpainting brush strokes will show you're actually making kind of grooves in the canvas and it's going to show so see how I keep overlapping and coming down and overlapping and coming down now I'll grab some more paint get this little plate out of the way so you can kind of see what I'm doing and I could have even used a bigger brush than this but for the purpose of our demonstration I think this is fine this is a number eight bright brush in other words it's sort of squared at the top could have used a filbert on this also could have used a bigger brush it's just an underpainting so we're going to just go ahead and see how I'm over, always overlapping then at this point I'm going to just grab some more paint and um, I've got some of that sky color mixed in it's my underpainting I really don't care I just need this to be blue and dry and then what I need to have happen here is I need to dry this canvas and I have not dipped my brush in water you see that I haven't dipped my brush in water but I am coming down getting the bottom of this canvas like this haven't dipped the brush in water because there but there is a little bit of water on my canvas when I miss it it's not like a Windex bottle it's designed for for painters you could probably use the kind of squirter that miss birds too that'll work then you see I'm going all the way across my canvas one end to the other one long stroke and putting that in okay so let me just let me just move that down a little bit now okay at this point I might consider just turning my painting upside down and then I'm going to just come very close to here and add that line right next to under my sky now if you're a little worried about doing this dry your sky first and then do this because if you mess up you can wipe it off alright so dry your sky first if you're a little worried about doing this little last technique alright so I've, I've pretty much got that now if you find if you go in the middle do you see you get a mark like that see this mark but if you lift up your brush you don't so if you must stop in the middle of your canvas or come out lift up your brush like an airplane taking off on the runway lift it up 
and you won't get sort of a weird mark. Look at all the paint that's on my brush. There's still quite a bit left in my on my uh, palette plate. This brush is going in water. The hair dryer is coming out. We're going to give this a good dry. So, and then at the end of the dryer, I'm going to go ahead and hit the cold button. And after I've dried it, and you, someone says, well, how do you know when it's dry? Well, of course, you could touch it, but also it's less shiny. See how shiny everything is right now? But when you dry it, it'll be less shiny. Then when I'm done, I'll hit the cool button and, and cool it all off, and then I can tell if it's still damp. Here's the cool button. It's important this layer is dry. If you want to take a break and just go away for 10 minutes and make sure that it's dry or even do your underpainting overnight, that's fine. You want this layer dry. Now, I've got a little kind of smudge up here where I didn't quite complete the underpainting process. And I could take a small brush because I've already got some of that color mixed, like this. I could come up here once it's not going to be dark enough. Let me see if I've got any right here I can show you. If I hit this right here like this and kind of lift up, I could do that. But here's the thing. You can either repaint your sky again if you didn't get it covered well. Or can touch it up a little bit if you save some of the paint, but that's that's the best I can tell you to do. If you just if you start fooling with it, you may find yourself needing to repaint the whole thing, and you don't want that. But I've got some clouds coming in here through here, so I'm going to just say that if I pull that little streaky line across here like that, I'll just make that part of the clouds, and that's fine. But anyway, you could either repaint it or just it would you'd paint it the same way. Now I want to come back down here. I'm using a number. Uh, four brush. I've small. I've made it smaller by a lot. I'm going to go ahead and the, remember in, in paint order you paint the background first. So I'm going to go ahead, put a little of this ultramarine blue and tiny bit of raw umber in it. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of raw umber, about one percent, and maybe a touch of white, just a little bit of white, like one percent of white too. So just the smallest amount. I want a dark. I want a dark horizon line. I'm going to go ahead and go over this, the back of my picture, put a little more thalo blue in, or ultramarine blue in it. Cause I want this, I want to make sure that I'm doing this pretty much how I did the first one. Cause basically, all right. So I've gone over this again a little bit. This is layer two. People say, well, how many layers do you do? Well, one of the things you got to remember, one of the rules about oceans. And for the most part, this is not all the time, but mostly it's true, is that it's darker at the horizon line. There's this darker line at the horizon line. You see, we put a little romber in it. See how we created a little bit of darkness right there at the horizon line. And you can be, you know, a little fussy if you want to and say, well, I didn't quite get this right here. But that's all right. For the purpose of what we're talking about, this is how I'm happy with this. Now, as I come on down, what I want, what I want to sh show you is I come on down with this picture, and I'll show you the picture again. As I come on down, see, we're just talking about this back part of the ocean. All of this is different. So we're talking about this back layer. So if I were to take a piece of chalk and say that, um, oh, I've got, um, let me just show you real quick. If this were in half, if I were to just fold this in half real quick like that, 
All right, right about halfway here is where my wave starts up. So this is about halfway, and it's coming almost toward the little past the middle of my canvas. It's going to come up like this and back down here. This is where, but all this still has to be painted regardless of what's happening here. So I'm going to go ahead. We've got these colors, and I'll go ahead and repaint my back ocean lines. Now it's an interesting thing. Uh, when you think about ocean swells or water swells, the ocean is a mirror of the sky. All right. For the most part, it's a mirror of the sky. And then what happens is, is when the waves sort of start, you know, building up, and I'm out of blue paint, so let me put some more ultramarine blue out. It's the thalo, where's the ultramarine? Okay, so when the um, waves start to come up and kind of start swelling up, they're darker. So you'll see these troughs of light and dark. And when it's darker, it's just a little ultramarine blue with a little tiny bit of raw umber. It's my unity color. I'm going to say, here's my darker swell coming up. Bringing this across like that. And there's kind of subtle, subtle tone differences here. Now, I might go back in a little bit and, and fix this trough. But at this point, this is, brush strokes are all going back and forth. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of raw umber. I'm going to go ahead and pull this right up behind this wave here. Now, this particular swell that's going behind this little wave here, I'm changing my brush strokes. I'm going to kind of come down this way, kind of like a at a sort of a sweeping angle to the right. And that's going to imply a trough of um, a swell, in other words. That's going to imply a swell. So if I'm saying that this is a swell, that this this wave is kind of a close-up swell, let me just sort of close in on here so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, you can't really see it. It's right here. So what I have to do is I have to come back behind it and lighten up the water behind it. Remember, in painting, there's either a light or a dark. So when I take, and that's that sky color we made. So I'm going to come up behind it and lighten this up a little bit. Give it just a slight triangular shape to it. Kind of lighten this up a little bit here. Now now do you see the swell? Now you see it. And why do you see it? Because I've lightened it up behind the wave. And one of the things I can do is I can take some paint on my brush like this, just on one side, and I can push pretty hard. And I can just, I mean, I can really give it a light bit right here. See that? Drag the paint, and then just smudge this out so that you barely see this light highlight. Do you see that? See how I did that? I'll do it again. You paint, put paint on one side of a bright brush, kind of almost vertical, push down a little bit harder. Now I've really made it lighter right there, almost gave it a white cap. Then I'm going to blend this all in. It's still wet. I haven't dried anything. Blend this all in. Just keep going back here. It would be keep going back here. We're not going to really see this on this side of the picture, but just by doing that, I have said that there is a light wave. Look at that. Now, I've got another swell back here that I'll put down. A little bit of ultramarine blue. And it's going to be less noticeable. You're barely going to see this. This is just in the back. It's almost going to be a straight line. This is the biggest one. We're just going to see it by values. Then I'll come back here behind it, maybe, and do another lighter um, streak of of blue, kind of sky color. Now this is all gets sort of blended back up into the the background. All right, so we're not talking too much about this. You don't want to get this too busy. I could take, if I wanted to say that this was another little wave coming here, could take a little bit of the light color like this on this side of the brush. <clears throat> I'm going to just push it down like this to drag that little white edge, and then I'm going to make it disappear. The one thing about white paint you can count on is it will disappear 
if the more you go over it. So we're just going to say that there's a little bit of a light edge to that here like this. Okay, so now we've created another swell just by doing that and I'm just going to say the background and some little ultramarine blue here, blend it all in so that just sort of disappears into the background. We don't want to talk too much about it. I think I want to bring this up a little bit. You can change it a little bit. So that's, we're going to say that those are our background waves. And then I might take a smaller brush than this and just get a little white paint on it because I want something on the top of this wave. Now see how I'm pushing harder? I'm doing the same thing, but it's just a smaller brush. And everything's wet. So I'm saying that this is this wave and it might be falling over like this. Dragging, maybe this is ooh, too much paint there. Let's say maybe this is pull this over, like maybe it's falling over a little bit right here. Where it's kind of crashing over. It's coming down like this. Then I will take a rag, wipe off the excess paint, and then just kind of blend this into the background here. Maybe put a little more blue with it. So if I got it too white, I know how to make it darker. There we go. If I got a little bit too light, but so so there's this is the background of of this wave. I right, like that. And we're saying that this is sort of pulling over like this a little bit. That this this wave might be sort of capping over so that the strokes are like that. The more I go over it, the white starts disappearing so it's not so bright. I'm going to say that that happened there. All right, so I kind of like that. Not doing too much back here. I mean, you could. You could. It's going to be covered by the wave, but just, just for the sake of argument, let's just put it in. We could put some um, mist on. Let's just mist the paint a minute. One, two squirts of mist water. And let's just go back here and just finish the ocean out, okay? Let's just put some streaks, kind of horizontal streaks back here in it. So let's just finish this ocean out. Maybe there's something happening here. There's going to be a rock over here and all this stuff, so I don't care what happens over here. But if I did, this is how I'd do it. Maybe bring this all the way back like that. Everything's going back and forth, east, west, west, east. All right, so that's that's what I'm talking about as far as being able to, you know, create this wave. I think I want something pulling over a little bit here too. All right, so there's that's that wave and. What, what would happen if it came up to a point? Now, see, this is where you start playing around with it. Say, I like this, but I want it to come up to a point here and then go back down. I could change it. Bring it up to a little triangular point. Take some ultramarine blue. Remember, I'm doing the trough bit. Then I'd come, wipe my brush, come right back up to the little brush and do the same thing again or maybe I'm pulling this over and just blend this in the back this is kind of this is kind of curling up the next wave this light doesn't even so it sort of curls up the next wave like that so there we go so there's this I'll just pull that out there you go so there's this wave it's, this this is kind of the one behind our big one and let's see where do I, what, what about happened here kind of mess this up. Let's just put a little white. We can always get rid of it if we don't like it. Okay, so there we are. This is this wave. Now this is all going to be covered, so we're not going to see it. Maybe we'll see a little bit more of this one. And again, I don't think I'm using pure white. I'm just sort of using that sky color. And I'm just going to just drag this along like that. Say back here, there's a little bit of this wave that we're seeing. Maybe Oh, maybe it's pulling over here too, like that. Just a little bit where it might be falling. It's rolling in. All right, so there's our background, and it gets this, this is all going to be covered back over here. We'll just, just in case it isn't though, what if we didn't do it? Let's just put it in now. Let's just drag this back like this. Say so that there's this wet, nice little wave behind us. See that? I'm just dragging that back there like that, just by having the paint on that one side, just to drag in that white. It's a good trick. You should practice it. Really good trick. See, I've got this little glob of white right there on the front of the brush, and if I push down and kind of to the side, I can deposit it right there on the canvas. It's one of my little tricks. 
All right, so that's this wave. Now what we're going to do is just dry that. We, oh, no, let's not do it yet. Let's bring a little bit of light up into this wave just here, a little bit. Now I'm going to put a little, I'm going to dip my brush in water, wipe it off, and I want it, because this is still wet, I haven't dried it, so just, I want to put a little bit of light going up into here. Yes, it's, we're going to lose a lot of this, but it would be sort of like that. Let's see, let's put a little water on my plate. Sometimes one of my tricks is I'll put a little water on my plate in a place where there's no paint, because I just want enough moisture on the brush to be able to affect the technique. I don't want it too wet, so I'm just going to lighten this up a little bit. I don't want too much detail. Take a little of the dark paint, put it back. Here's our ultramarine blue, put it back. There we go. Just like that. Now, all right, so that's that wave. We've got this wave coming up here. Now, what's interesting about this wave is that it's got to be white first, and that's so funny. So let's just put our best of our picture in. Let's dry this and just sketch out our picture. I think that'll help you. So I've, I've zoomed in. Let me zoom back out. See? Look at that. Now, try this real quick. People say, well, how long does it take you to do something? Well, we've been, re we've been at this 25 minutes, you guys. We've been at this 25 minutes. So let me make sure I have all my brushes in water that I'm not using. Okay. And I'm going to take a, um, oh, I don't know, an even bigger brush because I'm feeling a little lazy today. This is a number 10. And I'm going to take some white paint like this. And I'm going to say that I want this part here white. So I'm going to bring this all back down like this. Now brush strokes everything, you guys. Brush strokes everything. I'm going to bring it back around like this. So I've got this number 10 bright brush like this. Probably could have used that for the background too. And let's pull everything this way. See this direction. So here we go. I'm going to come under here like this. Just a little bit under the chalk line. I'm going to pull this down like this. And I want my brush strokes going kind of the same way, the sort of under in this direction. All right, so that's important. Now, if you see me doing this, doop, 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 doop. get more paint, please. Get more paint. I've used up all my white paint now between the sky and this and the wave. Now I'm going to start pulling it this way. That's about as much as I need to do. Now, if you keep going over it, you're almost going to erase it. But let's just start with here and say that that's our, that's where we're going to say that this wave is. That this is our main, this is our main wave here. Now, I'm going to dry it and do it again. Now, that's something people are shocked about. But I'm going to dry this and get a, give, do a second layer. Okay, that louder noise was putting it on cool. So now let's get out the white paint again. I have handily sitting here, and I'll put some more on a plate. My plate. Um, yeah, okay. I'm just going to put it right here. Sometimes I use two plates. Just not trying to confuse you all too much. Um, there you go. See? Second coat of white. And that's real important. The second coat of white is real important because you want this wave translucent. And the best way to achieve that is to paint it over white paint. The first paint layer still looked a little blue from the, the underpainting of the dark blue. Well, someone says, why don't you just leave it out? Well, I like, the, I like to do it in this order with acrylics. So with watercolor, a lot of other... Well, you'd have to leave it out. But for me, the advantage of acrylics, because you can dry them, is that you can skip a lot of silly steps 
and just do it like this and it works just fine and the more paint the better so there you go so we're going to say that this is um, coming like that all right let's just bring that off all right now I'm going to dry that again and that's got a, that's got a pretty good uh, and the big brush goes in water that's probably all I'm going to do that for right now the big brush goes in water I think that's dry. That feels pretty dry to me. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of chalk. I'm going to come along here like this and I'm just going to chalk in this this first rock. I'm just going to say I've got some sort of rock going here. And I've got a wave coming down here like this. I've got another rock down here at the bottom. Rocks are kind of arbitrary. You can just put some in. And I've got one here, but I don't want to put that in yet. I'm just sort of making my map, saying I've got a taller rock right here, and it's all going to kind of come like this, like that. And there's sort of a swell here. So then this wave is behind this rock. Now, I'm going to give this a chance to dry a little more. So I'm going to take burnt umber, and originally I had it on that plate, but I'm just going to grab a new plate take the burnt umber. I want this little separate. And I'll just take burnt umber. Here's raw. Where's burnt? Ah, oh, Alright, I opened a brand new tube of burnt umber. And this is from Matisse. It comes like this. It comes with it all capped up like this. So you can't, you couldn't squeeze it out. What you got to do is you got to have a little something sharp to open it with. I'm using a palette knife and I'm holding it very close to the edge so I don't bend the palette knife. And I'm just going to poke it in here like this and make like a little X thing like that to get the paint out and wipe the palette knife off. So that's how I'm opening it. I have suggested to them that they might uh, send an opener on a keychain or something, something handy that we could all use. Now here's a brand new tube of burnt umber. I'm going to take my finger and put a little bit on the back here so that I, when it's upside down I know what color it is. So now I've got burnt umber and I've got ultramarine blue. I'm just going to put out the colors kind of near where I'm painting. Here's ultramarine blue. I'm going to make a very, very, very dark brown. And I've started with a clean brush because I've, you know, here's the ultramarine blue and put that on the back of this new tube like that. And I might even get some dazzling purple. Um, there, a little bit of that. And the, this is going to be my darkest color for my rock. I'm going to take some dazzling purple, burnt umber, and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Mix it together. This is about as dark as I can make this. There you go. Very, very, very dark brown. A little more purple with it. So someone says, what's the ratio? Well, it's like 75%. Uh, burnt umber and 25% purple and 25% blue. Now I want to come in here like this and just paint in the rocks. Let me move this over so you can see it. And let's come up here and paint the rocks like that. Let's say that here's my rocks. Brush strokes are going down. See, they're going in this direction. They're definitely going down. You guys see that? 
just move it. Let's see, I can't, if I zoom in, you won't see the whole thing. So I can kind of do it a little bit like this. Come off the edge with this. And I can always add some water. You've got to imagine the rocks touching the ocean floor. This rock just isn't floating up here like a pancake. It's touching the ocean floor. It went all the way down to the bottom, and then the water's coming around it. So you've got to think about that when you're painting these. All right, and then I know I've got some dark brown rocks right here. As long as I'm happily putting in rocks, I'm going to put this in like this. And this is my dark brown color. And then I will dry this real quick. It's all the way down here on the bottom. I've got this dark brown. Always start with your darkest colors first. So there we go, or at least the color that's on the bottom. In the case of rocks, it would be a pretty dark color, darkest rock color. Now I'm not going to do these right now because they're going to be sitting on top of this. So these other rocks I'm not going to put. So what I'll do is I'll just mist this pretty good mist because I'm not going to use this for a little bit. Put this plate away, but I've misted it, so it should probably be all right, last for a while. Like I say, we're about 35 minutes in now to our um, our video, and then we need to dry these rocks. We just we need to do that. Now I'm looking at my picture again, and I realize that I want to come up even higher here with my ocean. So that means I need to bring my rocks even higher. They're going to come up about like this. So I'm not going to make some changes. And I'm going to say that this is coming up even higher here. It's, it really is. I'm going to bring this wave up even higher, right about like like that. And I say, and it's going to come eventually to this rock. So what to do, I've got that big white brush which I put in water. And I'm just going to come back, grab some more white paint, and just make this adjustment. And that's all you have to do. I mean, I didn't measure this out for you guys. I'm just saying, there you go. I'm going to bring this up a little higher here because it's going to come up even more. I'm going to bring this down like this, back behind this rock. And then this rock's going to come up here. Then I'm going to just take a little bit of the lighter paint and I want to lighten up my ocean behind my wave a little bit, more like the sky color. So I'm just going to take this big brush, which I probably should have been using in the first place, and just lighten up the ocean behind this wave a little bit. Then let's take a little bit of blue, brown, kind of mix with it. A little bit of ultramarine blue, put some streaks in it, just something here. But I want this, want this a little bit lighter, where we're going to put the mist over it. It's still going to be there, but there, like that. So I've lightened this up. Make sure this is kind of going this way, all going from left to right, like that. There you go. So all right. Let's put a little bit of this blue back here, just in a couple of places. We'll just put a few streaks. Just when this shows underneath the splash, I just want something besides the underpainting showing. So there you go. I, and I know I'm going to bring my rocks up here. So I'm going to grab that brush, which I have somewhere candy, and take the rock color. Bring it up even higher, like this, and there we go. As long as we're doing this, might as well dry everything at once. Okay, so I've brought my rocks up. All right, now dry this. A 
for those of who are measuring, I put my rocks about the highest points. It's just about two and a half inches down from the horizon line up there, and then about two and a quarter on this side. So wondering where the wondering where the rocks went, and then how far out did I go? Let's see. I'll tell you. I will tell you how far out I went. For those of you who are just not comfortable with this. I went out about six inches here and then about at the bottom about seven down here about six inches here. And if it's, it's a rock and you can cover some up if you did too much. Now we're going to deal with this and this is still wet. You see that? That has to be dry or this doesn't work. Then I hit the cool button and kind of set it, so that's pretty good. Now, okay, so let's get another plate. And what we're going to do is we're going to get another plate, and we're going to get out white. little tiny bit of phthalo blue. Now if you want to take it off the other plate you can. I'm just going to put out a little tiny bit of phthalo blue. But I'm going to go, go into cad yellow medium and I was thinking about that and then I was thinking you know what this is an advanced class. Let's use let's use um, Australian sienna if I can find it. Here's burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is it. Australian sienna is kind of a gold color. Here it is. Australian sienna is kind of a gold color, translucent gold color. Put a little bit of that there. Okay, now I'm going to take a palette knife and take some white, a little tiny bit of phthalo blue like this, a little tiny bit of Australian sienna. I've got this sort of blue-green color. You see that? This sort of blue-green ocean color. And that's really pretty, isn't it? And now if we add more white to this, it's lighter. Still. If we add more blue to that, it's more turquoise. We're talking about just teeny amounts of color. What you want to do is just sort of check your colors a little bit. Make sure you get them. If I take phthalo blue and Australian sienna and mix them together, I get this sort of pretty deep green color. See this beautiful deep kind of dark green color. Put a little more blue with it like that. Get a really nice deep dark green color. So practice, figure out what your colors are. Figure out the colors that you like. They're all wave colors, so they all kind of work. But figure out the, the colors you like. And I'm going to put that in water. Take a clean little brush. Now, if I were to just take some phthalo blue and, and um, Australian sienna, put water, I want you to show you what you get there. You can get a very translucent color like that. Now I haven't put any white in it, I've just put water. Now I'm just going to give you an idea what that looks like when you come over the wave. Alright, like that. So watch what happens if I take a nice big brush, like I'm going to rinse the white off, the one we just used, that nice big one. Wipe it off, make sure there's, there's no water on it. So no. Alright, let's just say, just to say for the sake of fun, I'm going to just take this, like this, just water now and start going over this white just like that. Now look how translucent that is. Do you see how translucent that um, that color is? Alright, so I'm going to start up here in this wave. This is the trick. There's no white in this. Just, just here's my plate so I can kind of see where I'm getting it with the water. 
just on top and the brush strokes are going this way. I'm going to bring this down like this, just over the whole thing. As I start to go left, I'm going to increase the, the pigment concentration a little bit. So as I start to go left, I'll get more into this darker color that I made just with those two. I'm still there's still no white in it, and I'm still bringing all the brush strokes down like this. Let's get a little more of this pigment concentration in between the two of these. Just going to bring this down. That's a little green for me, so let's put a little more blue in it. All right, now look, I want it darker over here. See that? I want it darker on this side. In fact, we'll go back and make it pretty dark. I want it darker on this side, and as it comes this way, it's going to be lighter. So what I want to do here is take a rag, wipe my brush off, just like this. Didn't rinse it. Now start bringing this back over a little bit so that it is gradually getting a little lighter as it comes here. And then I'm going to rinse my brush a little bit, wipe it off, and do the same thing here. Keep going over these edges. Now the interesting thing about this is if you go over it a lot, you'll start picking up paint. So if you want you want it a little lighter and you got a little bit darker, you can come here like this and even use the side of your brush and kind of erase a little bit. If you want the lightest point you want it is up here on the right, and then it gets darker as it goes down to the back. And now I'm going to take a little bit of this dark color and start up here like this from the bottom. Just start up here from the bottom and then lift up. Here from the bottom and lift up. Now you have to be kind of careful. There you go. So something like that. I'm going to lift up. And this is certainly one way to get away very, very translucent by starting with the white. And let's just bring this down a little bit here like that. Bring it down and it gets like, and I want it really dark over here. So I'll come back with paint. But at this point, um, see what about all this over here? Yeah, let's just rinse my brush a little bit, wipe it, and just put a little bit of color over here too. See that? And it's got some color on the brush. Let's just do all this like that. All right, so there's my very, very translucent wave, like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry it. So this is a kind of called glazing. This is glazing, and I'm going to dry all this. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and take this thalo blue and this Australian sienna, mix a darker blue here, kind of a darker blue-green. I'm going to put just a touch of raw umber in it from the other, other plate. And I want this to be my darker color in here. See that? This side here has got to be darker. Move this out of the way. I want this to be nice and dark here. This part of the wave is going to be darker. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of water on the tip of my brush and then tap it off on the paper towel and blend that through like that. I want this I'm darkening up this side right here like that. Now, at this point, I'm just going to put some water on the plate. I don't like to dip my brush in water all the time because Sometimes you get too much, and I just want to drop of this on the brush. And I'm going to kind of come back out here. And okay, do you see how we sort of lightened it up a little bit here? Now coming up like this. Now I'm going to use the side of my brush like this. Now I'm not going to be doing this downward stroke. Kind of the side of my brush and making some little circles here. And start. 
just the side of my brush, adding this little sort of circular foam stuff. Now here's where I'm going to start adding some white to this. So we talked about that. So here's some, I'm going to start putting some white in this mixture and a little bit more of that uh, Australian Sienna. And I'm going to go here. Now when you start putting white, you lose a little bit of the translucency of the wave. You won't get as much. Once you start adding white, it won't be as translucent, but that's all right. Just was for the purpose of the demonstration. Now see here, I've got this darker here. Then I'll come back with the dark paint like this. Use the side of my brush and blend this in. So I'm kind of blending these colors in gradually into the center here so that it's it, it sort of starts, it, it's dark on one side and it starts getting light on the other. And I don't have enough paint mix, so I'm going to add some more here. So right in here, I'm going to start adding some of this dark color. It's almost green. I think it's kind of pretty. If I wanted it bluer, I would just add more phthalo blue to it. Now another color you could have bought is um, phthalo green which is a really great color for waves. And someone says, well, what about that color? So let's take a little bit of white here on my brush, put right there, and let's just mix this in as I go. See what I'm doing? Kind of an instinctive thing here. I start mixing this in, and I don't want, I want a very soft line between here and here. Now, a little bit of white here. Start coming up like this. Just lightening this up a little bit here. Why, see, you'll always see me wiping the brush. Now look here, on the edge, just smudge that out so that it just is very gradual. And this is all going to be white up on top of here, so I'm not so worried about that. Now here's where we're going to use the mixing white. That's your translucent white. And I'm going to put some of that out. That's the transparent white. And I'm going to put a little squirt of that out. That's made by Liquitex, but you could buy zinc white from um, gold, Golden, too. All right, so here we go. Here's mixing white. Haven't cleaned my brush, but now look what happens. It's even more translucent. I'm making these sort of little circular motions here with the brush. Because I want it darker down here at the bottom of the wave. I only want it translucent way up there. See that? way up there, I want it translucent. It's a little darker at the bottom and it gets up. Now, wipe the brush right into the mixing white. More mixing white. Now, pull this down like this. See, we're always mixing into the wet paint. There we go. See that? See this great translucency that we've got going here more pure mixing white here, all the way up here over all this, and then blend this out just using the flat of your brush, and then pull it back down like that. And there we've got it. We've got, I think that that's pretty good. I still think I'd like it a little bit darker down here at the base. So I'm going to take a little mixing white and a little of this blue color. And I want to make it a little darker down here. So I'm just going to come up. It's new blue. It's different blue. See that? I'm going to bring a new blue up here. And as long as this is all wet, this all works just peachy. If it's dry, not so much. The side of the brush kind of just fuzz that out. So I want it a little bit darker as it comes up into the swell. And um, now I want to go take that same color and just turn my turn my painting around, come right next to the rock with this, and maybe put a little bit of, now, I'm going to put, tight, well, no, I'm still going to use mixing white, see if that'll cover. Mixing white's very translucent, it doesn't cover real well, so let's see if that'll cover that, that blue. Let's see if it'll do it. Yeah, a little bit. Now, wipe my brush off, go right into the mixing white, Wipe my brush off. Now, it isn't going to cover this gradation. So we didn't paint the white all the way down to this rock. So we're going to have to go to, into titanium now to cover that. So a little drop of titanium white. And you see how that just covers up that line between the underpainting and the rock. See that? And it still kind of gives a darker color. So people say, well, when do you know when to use what or what? And just 
just kind of experiment with it. If it isn't working, get the other color. All right, so we're going to say that we're bringing this up in here like that. Now let's turn this around. Now we're right at, we're going to be at an hour. We'll be right at an hour when we finish this particular wave. So we're going to stop here and call this part one after we finish this wave and background here. And then we're going to continue on with the rest of it. Because I think an hour is about it. But can, and this is taking longer because we're using bigger, um, uh, a bigger canvas. All right. But as long as I'm doing this, all right, I'm going to go ahead and take some more phthalo blue out. I could dry all this, but I'm just going to leave it. Isn't that nice? It's a really nice translucent wave, and we haven't done any of the rest of it. It has this beautiful translucent color to it. I want to put some more phthalo blue out. And let's see, here's white. Where's phthalo blue? Here's ultramarine. Phthalo blue, here we go. And let's put the white out of the way. I want to go ahead, take this phthalo blue and this little bit of that. Australian sienna, a little more, probably 75% thalo blue. And just do 1% of the raw umber for a unity color. And come down here like this, because I, I know I want all this dark here. And bring this down into here, all right? Just going to bring this down into here a little bit. Say that this edge is darker. This part of the wave is darker. Now, then I will take a little bit of ultramarine blue and white. Now, I haven't rinsed the brush. And now I'm going to sort of meld those two colors together. See that? I'm going to meld those two colors together because I haven't rinsed my brush. Now I'll go back more into um, ultramarine blue and, and white. Okay, right on the brush like this. This is where you're mixing on the, you're mixing the colors on the canvas. That's sort of an advanced painting technique. You see that? Coming under here, and I've got everything sort of curving. And I'm going to go ahead more with thalo blue, a little bit of white, just like just like that. Thalo blue. Let me bring this up so you can see it. Start down here in the corner. Remember, my brush is dirty. So now I'm going to start blending this down this way. Go back to the dark. Blend over that. There we go. See, so I've, blend, I've kind of melted these two colors together, went over my underpainting. And as long as I'm doing that, I'm just going to continue on with that a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm just going to continue on just a little bit with that. Just a little bit. Just right in here, like this, with this darker green color. Which is sort of phthalo blue and Australian sienna. You know, another really good color is um, Southern Ocean Blue, my Matisse, and that is the most beautiful ocean color. And now at this point here, I'm going to take a little mixing white and blend this up a little bit like this, just so that there's a, a transition between these two. And yes, there's going to be some rocks, but look, a little bit of mixing white. A little bit right there, and blend it out. This is all. See how I'm just lifting up my brush? Use the side of it. If some of this shows later, that'll be all right. It'll be some of the holes there. So I'm going to lighten this up. There you go. So that's that's the sweep of this wave. Now we haven't done much. We haven't, you know, done all the little, um, you know, white frothy things. But like I say, we're right at 59 minutes. We're right at an hour, and this is a good place to stop. And I want to make sure that I have enough of this dark up here, up here on the edge of my wave here. This is a, not a terrible place to stop. But I think I'll just go over just a minute or two, as long as we're doing it. And I want to come kind of this way with some ultramarine blue and white. Same dirty brush. Maybe hit this corner right over here. Let me just bring this against the side here where you can still see it. See where this rock is going to be here? I'm going to say that there's some 
It's just the next sort of layer of painting paint that's happening. And then this is going to be in front of the rock like that. This color here is going to be in front of the sustalo blue and white. It's going to be in front of the rocks like this. And it's going to come down this way. So I'm sort of establishing the direction of my paint now. Do you see that? This is I'm sort of establishing where everything's going. So a little bit of uh, thalo blue here. Pull everything down this way. Put a little bit of mixing white with it so you can kind of see it. Everything's coming down this way. Now, there we go. So we've got we've got sort of an ocean coming in here, and it's kind of pretty, isn't it? It's not finished, but it's looking pretty good. And it's a it's a good way to learn. You know, big brush like this. This is a number ten. That's a good that's a good brush to play with. And we haven't done the rocks. We haven't finished all this wave part. But for at an hour, we've got a good part of the painting laid in. So I'm going to stop the the, the recording now, and invite you to watch part two of Crashing on the Rocks. Look for that, and then let the, all this dry, and then start again.